viewers, welcome to the studio. I'm Kat, Katharina G. Leo, and uh, I wanted to uh, thank you for your comments and all your thumbs up. We'd love to have you subscribe, so if you hit the subscribe button, that would be wonderful. And today, we're going to be making this little tiny fabric covered book. I'm really glad that you guys gave me an excuse to make these because I've been wanting to make a grungy little book like this for ages now and I wanted to share the technique with you today so I'm just going to unwrap this one. They were both published in Sew Somerset a while back. This one is a uh, study on childhood um, based on my childhood and this little person here represents me and then all of the different things that really gave me great enthusiasm as a child and made my world very enchanting. Um, and so as you can see it's uh, it's uh, cardboard stitched to cloth and that's what we're going to do today I'm going to share that technique with you this is a, a rather large concertina usually larger than what I make I normally make just you know four little little pages this one I absolutely love I made it made it with everything antique so the ribbon is um, an antique very pale pink ribbon um, which is falling apart as you see. Sometimes we just make things for ourselves, you know. Um, and this is about the, the uh, it's about the travel of butterflies and about fragility in our life. I just, I, I absolutely love this yummy little book. And as you can see, the, the cardboard is really old um, and the cloth is stitched to the cardboard. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. But we're not gonna make the identical same thing because that would be so boring. And you know, I just don't do boring things. So today we're going to um, use antique cloth and I started with this and then I tea dyed it and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you how I did that right now. So I'm going to tell you that you want to go to my blog and see my last post because I explained a bit about murdering fabric and um, I started with this antique um, tablecloth. It was a little table topper and I loved the little scalloped edges on it. Um, I just thought it was so so yummy and so but I didn't want it white. I wanted it like to be kind of a pinky brown color so we tea dyed it and I'm not talking about just dipping it in tea and then hanging it up to dry. I'm talking about actually um, creating the tea bath and um, dyeing it and then taking all of the fabric together and wadding it up and tying it up with string and then boiling it and then letting it dry and then double dyeing it again so that it's a little darker. So you can see this one is just slightly darker than this one. And um, the other thing I did that's really fun, that's a little secret, is I put chai tea in the um, dye bath with the black tea. And you can use any kind of black tea you want. You can use a wake, you could use um, Oh, Darjeeling, um, anything that you want. Um, and but I but I put a little bit of chai in because you know old fabrics and old papers sometimes smell kind of funky. So I uh, I love the scent of it. So now it smells really great. I wish you could smell it. But anyway, so I took that dye bath and then I put it into this bowl. I know it looks grungy and yucky, but it's a wonderful dye bath now. And now I can. Um, it's going to be even. Um, richer and I can put little bits in there and make them really dark and just let them sit there for a day or so and it's really really cool. Okay so I know it sounds like a lot of work but look at this color. Isn't this yummy? And of course when it's all bundled and then dries it gets these wonderful marks on it. And of course I ripped it to shreds because I love to murder fabric. And um, so today we're going to do a completely hand stitched book with fabric inside and outside and I'm going to get started on that right now. Okay, so after you've dyed your fabric or used whatever kind of fabric you want, then we're gonna talk about cardboards. And I always collect old cardboards. Anytime I find an old picture at Goodwill or Salvation Army or any kind of thrift or, or uh, um, an estate sale, I always take the cardboard out and save it because it's always wonderful for bookmaking projects and all kinds of things. You can see this one came from an old box and I just really love it. They're great to use for art projects. 
Um, for this project though, I want something really kind of thin. Now this is a, um, a corrugated cardboard piece and it's almost perfect. Um, it's got kind of a spongy consistency to it, um, just slightly springy, which is great. But I'm thinking we're going to use this old cardboard and um, that we're going to cut it down because I think it's going to be absolutely the perfect size once we cut it down. And I'm just going to eyeball it so that there's a little bit of an edge of fabric left and then mark it and I'll show you all the cuts. So I use the strips of fabric to just fold my concertina. So one, two, three folds and then just creased it and now I have the idea of where I want my page to be or my cardboard and the cardboard is going to be inserted inside of it. So I'm going to take this is going to be my front cover, so I'm going to take the inside out and I simply measured it on the cardboard. I kind of eyeballed where I want it to go. That might be just, just slightly too big, so I'm going to erase it and start over again. Okay, and then I'm going to hand cut each one and then I'm going to use my sanding sponge to sand the edges so it's not quite so hard. I don't want the cardboard to show on my page. I just want the fabric to show up. So I'm gonna cut it appropriately. So as you see, I'm making this grungy little book and some of the pages are gonna be just slightly bigger than some of the other pages, which is exactly what I want. I want it to be really fun and really interesting and really old. So I'm gonna cut them to size. So I can't give you an apparent you know, I, I can't give you real dimensions for this because it's just a fun book that we're creating. So that's going to take a lot of anxiety out of her for those of you who are bookmakers that, you know, worry about things being absolutely the right length and the right size and all of that. It's going to give you some ideas about making something that's, that's really fun and really yummy. So I'm going to cut this, cut this up and I'm going to cut the rest of them and I'll come back when I have them all ready to go. Okay. Again, this is my cover and these are going to be the inserts for my book. And so to hold them in place I'm going to use my trusty glue stick. I love using a glue stick in the studio to hold things in place. It's one of my favorite secrets. Um, when I'm doing collage I can just set something down and see do I like it? Does it really want to live there? Is it telling me that's where it wants to be? Um, so I use this quite a bit and so we're just simply going to um, hold them in place because we're going to stitch them down and we don't want them moving so it always works better if you if you glue the, the cardboard so I'm going to give it a little kiss with our glue stick some smoochy kisses on there and we're going to set it down Okay, and now it's not going to move around too much. It's going to move around a little, but not as bad. Okay, the next step is to stitch it down. So I have my, my back cover. And what I wanted to do was use the ripped edges up against the scalloped edges because I thought that would be really cool. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do it this way, I think. Nope, we're going to do it this way. We're going to refold it because it's going to be better for this end. Because I made the, the back end just a little bit bigger than the others. Um, it'll just help with the weight of the book. But you don't have to do that. I just thought it would be fun. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with my glue stick. give them all kisses and it'll hold it in place while we're stitching it and I'm going to get my thread and get my awl and get everything together okay I have my trusty awl and I have a rag underneath my little book that's just held together with a little bit of uh, glue stick and fabric and cardboard and as you can see I've been punching 
holes so that I can follow it and stitch through. And I'm going to stitch all the way through the top and then all the way through the bottom. And then I'm going to come right back and show you what I'm doing. So we'll just do a real quick tuck. So I'm just going to mark with a pencil where the cardboard is. Just make a little mark. I can go back and erase it if I don't like the way it looks. And then I'm going to go ahead and hole punch again all the way down. thunderstorm here today. <laughs> we tried to keep it quiet, but, but <laughs> we can't. Okay, so I'm just going to hole punch all the way down and then I'm going to stitch it and we'll come right all back. Right. I finished stitching my book and this is how it's going to look just like this. This is going to be the front cover and I love the strings. I don't know if I'm going to keep them um, right now. Right now I like them. So we'll see how it goes. And I may rip some of this fabric off again because, um, you know, it's kind of like taking over a little bit. So the way I'm going to do that is just ripping the fabric just like that. <laughs> because this book is about the beauty of aged things. It's about how it steals your heart away to look at something that's old and crumbling and splendid and beautiful and the faded rose how gorgeous it is and so just allowing it to to, uh, to be the way it is and uh, of course the stitches aren't straight they're a little wonky and I just I really love that about that about the book because that's what I'm trying to say is how beautiful age is. Okay, so this is the back cover. Isn't that yummy? And this is the inside which we've left plenty of space for embellishments and that's what we're going to talk about now is embellishments. So I went through all of my stuff and uh, I made a little heart because um, I was thinking about how the age of this just steals my heart away and uh, so uh, I just simply um, used some rub-on letters, tiny, tiny, tiny. I hope you can see that. It says heart. And uh, this is a little piece of plastic. So I, I stitched the fabric and the paper together, cut it in a heart shape, and then stitched them together, and then put a little tiny piece of clear plastic over it so that the rub-ons won't come off and I glued it. Oh, and by the way, we're having a storm today, so if you hear rumbling, you know what that is. Uh, anyway, so um, I stole a heart, and then I found this. This was fortuitous. Um, it says, clinging for there, I stole a heart, and I thought, oh, perfect. I'm just going to rip that, and I'm going to glue that in, and then also I have this uh, uh, cheesecloth, and um, so I'm going to... Um, just glue a, a few pieces of cheesecloth down too. So I'm just going to pull the threads and then um, it'll be easy to cut. You can see that line right there. And uh, I'm just going to glue a few, a few pieces down and make some embellishments. And um, I'm going to put my gloves on because you know how I am about gloves. So, okay, so I am just this is a dry brush, no water. I just said the water's there just to put it in when I'm done. Um, and because if you use water on your fabric, you're not gonna like what it looks like. So make sure you don't get it back into the water. I'm just using gel medium. And just a tiny bit of gel medium to hold it on. 
Yep. And I'm just going to poke it back in there so it'll just stay there. And I'm going to rip my words out and start positioning them. And the words came from antique player music, which um, I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> and I've used it before in a lot of different art pieces. And we're going to put a little bit more Okay, if you can't get it to, to tear appropriately, then just rip it <laughs> or cut it or whatever you have to do to get it off of there because we're making art here and we're just not waiting. Okay, so under the heart, I think, I want it to go there. So. You want just enough, but not too much because you don't want it to be clumpy. So I still a heart. You can make your book about any topic that you want, whatever you want to create. Um, now as artists, we make art for ourselves often and I love that about us as a group of, of people that we make things for ourselves. Okay, now I will probably go back over this just lightly. Um, you don't want to use too much because you don't want it to stick to itself, but you want it to actually be able to open and close. All right, that's still a heart. Okay, and then this little bit of lace that I um, that I dyed. And by the way, when you make a good dye bath, poke everything that you want into it. You know, just make sure that you know you use that dye bath for all kinds of things. So I just love this this tie. Um, I thought I would use this as the tie for my book. You could use anything you want any kind. You could use the string from the dye bath. That would be lovely too. That would be really cool. Um, but I just thought this would be really, really neat. Okay, you can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. You can do whatever you want. But there we go. Well, we're at chow for now. I never believe that we get to chow for now because I always have so much fun with you guys. Um, and I, I really enjoyed making books with you today in the studio. And next time we're going to be uh, working on transfers again. So I have some fun products for you to use. And uh, we're going to be making transfers a little bit different way. So I think we're going to have a really good time. And I can't wait to see you um, then. Thanks for your thumbs up. And um, 